Okay, uh, The Abyss, finally on 4K. Uh, how long have we been waiting for this one? A uh, long, long time. So it is good to see it out on 4K, finally. And um, it's, I mean, to be honest, it is good that James Cameron is bringing uh, these movies to 4K, finally. Um, but certainly all of the, um, th these came out in a bunch, um, you know, True Lies, The Abyss and Aliens. And um, their restoration methods have definitely come under scrutiny. And uh, this was the second movie I watched, so I'm kind of reviewing in, in order. Um, and yeah, uh, Aliens for me was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a letdown, a bit of a disappointment because um, it left its digital mark over the image, and you know that is something I do do not like. Right, that is something I just do not like. Um, I want to see the image, you know, as it was, um, without this uh, extra digital fluff that uh, James Cameron uh, seems to like. Um, you know, because um, I, I said this in the Aliens review, but um, it can't be a coincidence that every single movie that he's bringing to 4K has some type of digital manipulation going on to the image, right? It, it just can't be, hey, every single film stock that I used, I didn't like the look of, and hey, I'm going to change it now. Surely it cannot be that. Um, so, <clears throat> I took a few screenshots, but um, let's get into this first. Um, so this is the immediate info uh, of the movie itself. Um, the bitrate is 43.1 megabits per second, which is very low for 4K. To be fair, this is a long movie, but, um, you know, that, that's, that's low. That's, um, that's day one Disney on 4K low, you know. So, to see bitrates this low is not encouraging for me. Um, because, but um, high bit rates would indicate that um, there actually is a lot of noise and grain in the image because noise and grain require so much more to encode, like from a bit rate uh, perspective. And when you kind of nullify uh, grain or at least control it in a bit of a different way, in a digital way, the bit rate requirements do go down. So, um, now it says here stream size, which was 91%. So they're 9% off of their target, which um, which happens a lot in encoding, because um, if you're low or under bitrate in certain scenes, you don't just automatically in later scenes get that, that bitrate back, because it is on a one second uh, basis on, on 4K disc and, and disc formats in general. Maybe not DVD, I think DVD was like 13, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I think it was, may, may even been half a second. 13 frames or something like that <clears throat> excuse me but um yeah uh so 91 percent uh you can work out what they was trying to target are relatively easy here so you take the bit rate and remove the decimal points essentially and add a zero so uh four three uh one zero uh divided by 91 47. They was targeting around 46 to 47 megabits per second. Around there, right? Um, could even have been 48, but that's what they was targeting, and this is what it actually ended up uh, coming out to be. So, um, because I, I, can, I use this calculation on my encodes as well. It's the same, it's the same thing, right? I can target 98 megabits per second, but the only way you're going to reach nine true 98 megabits per second file on an actual encode is to have the most heavy film grain content you've ever seen. The highest I've got is 96, yeah, 96. So 2% away from my actual target. And that was with like Maestro, a Maestro trailer, which was ultra heavy grain. Or it was, um, uh, uh, what's the other one? There was, there was a Christmas uh, heavy film grain movie. I can't remember what it is. The, the Leftovers? The, uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> anyway, uh, targeting these types of bit rates, generally speaking, is, um, 
it, it's actually difficult to achieve uh, the target bit rates that you actually want to go for because of the way the frame by fr the second by second um, iframe system that Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray have to target and use. Once those frames are gone, it now is just looking at the um, uh, the frames to come, which is generally again only one second. So um, you can be quite under. One thing I've noticed though is that the more grain that you remove, the lower this number becomes. So, you know, because um, I've seen some of my encodes that are, are much lower than this. Um, and it's because they don't have grain, right? So, um, <clears throat> uh, this my camera could be in the way, so I'm going to read it out. It's uh, the Mastering Display Luminance. Um, which is essentially put in a 1000 nit container, right? Um, this is pretty much done for most 4Ks now. You put them in a 1000 nit container and this is completely fine, right? Uh, we're using Dolby Vision anyway though, so when you think about this from a light output perspective as well, a lot of TVs, um, especially, uh, I'll say this, Especially the 23 and the 24 TVs, uh, 2023, 2024 TVs, they can tone map, like I'm pretty sure they can tone map up to uh, 4,000 nits. And the 2024 TVs I've seen can actually tone map up to 10,000 nits. How good they are at 10,000, I don't know. And the only content that you really have at 10,000 nits is, say, Spears and Months, all right? So it's not really a big deal to tone map up that high. Um, I think there might be some video games that do that, but um, I've heard they're not actually done and implemented correctly. So uh, max content uh, light level is 800 nits. So th this is more like it, right? Aliens, on the other hand, was like 200 nits. And it was like, what? Why was it that, like, why was it that low? Um, you know, I just, I didn't really understand why it was that low. Because this movie, um, this movie actually looks lower in, in light output, but it's got higher peaks. Uh, the average light is 44, and to me that actually makes sense, right? Because it's not a bright movie, right? O on average, it is not a bright movie. I'd, I would not consider this a HDR fest at all. This to me, though, is showing as well that when you're at 800 nits, which most people, when you see an OLED, OLED displays, typically you would say they're around 800 nits. My C9, after calibration, was 804 nits. So, um, and that was in HDR10, right? It wasn't Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision was actually lower. So, um, most OLEDs, w you would not need Dolby Vision for this. And this, uh, this has come under like, you know, a discussion really, I guess you could say about with Disney and their discs or just the way this is done and, and, and the mastering on the luminance and things like that at a thousand nits, do we even need Dolby Vision? It is so minor on displays, I think, um, on flagship displays that did it warrant the license from Dolby to even achieve this? I, I don't know. Because the thing is, when you put on any display that is currently available in the world, if you put the display into Dolby Vision, it will be darker. Slightly, only slightly, than HDR10. So you, you actually lose some potential, uh, but you do, gain, you do gain more potential in bit depth, right? So there is a trade there. Um, but I'm still not seeing that any of the Disney discs released that are with Dolby Vision currently needed them. So, um, yeah. But, you know, this is closer to what, you know, which is a good level, 800 here, rather than, again, the uh, Aliens, which was, which was far lower um, at 200. So, yeah, I just wanted to discuss this um, just real quick. And now we'll get into the actual screenshots uh, of the movie. <clears throat> so yeah. So right away, like um, on just some of these early shots, right, I can tell that there is grain manipulation going on here. And the, how you can tell that is because 
uh, grain no longer becomes fine specks. They become um, they become connected to a digital um, block almost, and that's how it looks to my eyes. Um, you have gra a far greater capacity to see this on an OLED because you have true pixel control uh, or visuals over what you actually see, whereas the projectors and the LC LED uh, uh, LED LCD screens. I don't even know if they do LCD anymore, do they? But um, you know those types of displays. Um, you don't have that level of um, control and um, clarity that you get from an OLED to see some of this stuff that is actually going on. Um, they, are, they are inherently soft displays anyway, and OLED is not. OLED tr really shows you what uh, these, these uh, restorations are doing and what James Cameron obviously wanted, right? Um, it does suffer as well, um, this movie, from grain control underwater. Especially with film glow. Um, anything shot on film glows. But then you put softness um, from digital noise reduction, or it's, uh, some type of digital noise reduction, I'll call it. What it is actually, what in the industry what it is called, I'm not, uh, I don't know. But it affects the image in, um, I think, a negative way. When you have this many, you have artifacts from analog and you have artifacts from digital as well. And you get kind of the, like this look that I don't particularly like. I'm not saying it is terrible. But the thing is, I, when I see shots like this and on many of the other underwater shots, I know there has been di digital manipulation uh, done to these shots. Right? It no longer looks analog to me. And you can see this clearly on an OLED. I'm not sure about the other displays. I've used those displays for years, so I have an idea of what I think it would look like. Uh, I've been to demos of projectors um, from Sony that's, you know, twenty-one to $25,000 and been extremely unimpressed, right? And that's the thing. Once you go to an OLED, yes, it's a smaller screen than a projector, but just to gain size, you lose so much in actual picture quality, right? I mean, one of the things on a projector and LED LCD displays, you cannot display display black borders uh, correctly, right? They're gray, so you lose dynamics uh, right away, um, you know. So. Um, again, same thing. I can tell that this is digital manip manipulated grain. It's no longer fine speckled grain here as well. I can tell it's digital, right? But yes, we have really nice, um, quite nice resolution, right? Now, to me, um, this doesn't look upscaled or have that ringed out edgy upscaled look that aliens did. This, to me, does look, this actually looks more filmic, right? It really does. There is less digital manipulation done to this movie than the other two, right? Aliens and uh, True Lies. Um, so, from from this perspective, um, it is quite it's quite nice that you know we don't have this uh, ultra heavy ringing caused by either upscaling or increasing uh, sharpness and detail. You would have to increase sharpness and detail if you applied too much um, DNR softening, right? To control all the, this noisy grain. So, um, yeah, I mean, but, but I think relatively decent. You know, a lot of these shots, there's quite a number of shots where I'm like, it's actually handled relatively well. It's decent. Um, it's on the softer side, and again, I, I, you can tell here with light compared to hard edges, they're not actually using, if any, sharpening here because it is a true native uh, 4K, right? This is this is definite, and it looks more filmic uh, of, from them doing this. But again, me, uh, where my eyes go, flat and hard edges, I can tell that this is digital noise now and not film noise, 
So, you know, um, it's not the end of the world, um, this transfer. Again here, it's too smooth. It's too controlled, it's too controlled. I, I can see this right away. I don't, I can't remember what the laser disc uh, looked like and anything like that and say with color grading. I would not be surprised though if the same type of thing happened that happened with aliens where potent, there could be potential here for the image to lean partially green and now we bring blues out and you can tell with this a few of the hues here the way light is and then the way it affects shadows and things like that. Um, I did like, uh, from a color grading point of view, I thought it was completely fine, you know. Um, again, it's not the brightest movie. Um, you know, we don't see sunlight, right? So everything is lit uh, from the cabins they're in themselves. So, you know, um, not really much to say here, but um, again, it, it, you, I can tell, I can tell, it doesn't look artificially sharpened, right? And if they have used sharpening, it's at a very, it's at a low enough break point where the eyes don't really, my eyes don't, can't really say, hey, it's been digitally altered, right? This, th th it, this looks filmic. Um, there is a softness to it which I can't really t say whether it is film, uh, glare soft, or it is from, say, digital manipulation. And that's a good place to be, though, where you, you couldn't tell, right, on, on shots like this. I do like that. Um, thing, again, uh, I'm looking at edges and things like that. It looks smooth to me. So, again, really showing, I think, that this is a um, true native uh, source and scan uh, nice not nice detail right not over the top or anything like that but nice detail for what they have with the cameras but I can tell um, this is too clean right and there is di digital manipulation going on here in backgrounds of shots right this is really a common theme uh, throughout this movie and this style of restoration right um, so yeah uh, really the same things so, yeah, here. I'm looking for flat backgrounds and things like that. Um, you know, this doesn't look aliens um, edgy or, or anything like that or terribly over sharpens, but there could be something going on here uh, with, um, you know, the side of her face with ringing and things like that. It is not like egregious or anything like that. Um, it's not, and, and the thing is, there's a lot of things in this disc that actually are not completely obvious. Um, so, which again is a, is a good thing. So, um, definitely, um, the difference between this this restoration and say Aliens and uh, True Lies is is far better, right? It is far far better. But um, you know, I'm still at a point here where that a lot of shots I can actually tell um, that are, are digital, that's the problem. This could be just some odd artifact, but the 235 uh, border here looks as though it's ringed slightly, um, which means that they are, it could also be light, there is potential there. We could have just been very unlucky here, right? But it does look as though they're trying to put sharpness or detail back into the image after it being soft, softened like this. This is a difficult shot um, to restore if they're using that style of restoration, which is removing noise, because there would have been a lot of noise in these dark shots, right? A lot of film grain in these dark shots. There would be a lot of film grain in her hair. So, and you can actually, you can see this because it, it doesn't have that appearance anymore of pin sharp fine grain. Yes, this is just a screenshot, but you can tell that it, it, it isn't. It is now uh, moving into digital noise rather than digital, uh, sorry, um, rather than analog film noise, you could say. Um, there's also little things going on here. Again, minor artifacts of 
them changing grain into um, a bit more of a soft look. And that's the thing, you get analog artifacts from um, shooting on film and you're combining that with uh, the artifacts coming from digital restoration. Uh, you need, uh, in my opinion, you need to be really careful about doing things like this. And um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so it's so here, so here's the thing, right? With uh, it is it is a difficult style of restoration to do. Uh, this because, again, you're mixing so many different artifacts from formats to formats, right? Uh, when you shoot on film and you have light um, in any part of the screen, it will glow on film and scatter, right? We are scattering light here. This is even more obvious when you shoot on film. It, when you shoot digitally like this, you don't get this glow that you get here. You actually have to put it in after, in post, to get this style of glow that film has. Again, though, the problem from, uh, with doing this is when you create this and there was film grain on top of that layered all over this and you're trying to clean this up, you're affecting the way some of this, um, the way this scatters, and it, it looks, again, it, it, it has an impression of it looking a, a little too digital now, on top of having analog artifacts. You know, this is, this is a difficult thing to clear up. Um, there might even be breakdown here as well in these screenshots uh, here. Uh, you know, so, you know, you kind of, you've, you've, you have artifacts from one source and you don't like those, but are these acceptable? Because to me, they're, they're really not. And again, this is not a bad restoration. It just became a pinch on the obvious. Well, that's, it just became, I could see what they'd done. That's uh, really what I'm trying to say. Same thing, scattering light, very difficult to do. And um, with them applying some, any type of uh, noise reduction here, it can, bre it can clump into blocks, right? Not super obvious when things are moving like this. It isn't, it's not super obvious. But you're watching these frames move, right? At 24 frames a second, and I can just see the water and the glow is just it, it just doesn't look right it there is something unnatural about it right to my eyes it just doesn't look absolutely perfect that's all um you know um also um there is also potential for for glow um with 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 glow like this to introduce banding Yes, this is Dolby Vision and we have the highest bit depth possible, but there are instances of banding here and it, it's actually uh, made worse by using any, any type of digital noise reduction because it allows grain to start clumping in layers, right? And once you start doing that, this, is, this shot isn't super obvious or anything like that. I'm just trying to say that when you use that type of restoration that you can get um that type of banding happening right um and again these are just some of the things you've got to really look out for when when overdoing things like this so um definitely this again the same the same deal we, we've got a lot of grain control going on here and yes the focal point now becomes the characters on screen and you're not really distracted by grain Right, because um, for for some people, yes, it, it could be a distraction. Grain can be a distraction, and uh, some people actually really hate it. Right? Excuse me. They really, really do not like it. But I'm on the other side. I, I don't like when uh, grain is now manipulated to look or be hidden. Right? Because it, it affects uh, the rest of the image. So. This to me looks uh, a little. Uh, this looks too far soft, right? 
Um, I think we've gone slightly too far here. Um, gorgeous shot, though. Right, you know, the, the camera work and the cinematography, I thought, was stellar. Right, I thought it was absolutely stellar throughout. I think that looking past the restoration itself and just seeing the shots, right, I think it's 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 absolutely gorgeous. I think look at look at the lighting, right? You've got one one from one side and you've got the red coming from another. It just I don't, it's framed nice. I just think it, it it's done really really well. Um. So yeah, but but again, we've we've got definite grain control going on here um, and potential uh, I'm even looking at the 235 borders here to see if there is over sharpening happening right uh, that's definitely you know that, that can definitely be a thing here so um, again really nice shots in general um, I really like them they are leaning on the soft side which actually is fine when it is just uh, because of the analog camera itself and shooting on film. Film is film is a relatively soft uh, medium, right? Whereas digital is actually it's actually kind of ugly because uh, um, there's a, you actually get a lot of edging, unfortunately, as well shooting digitally. Uh, it doesn't look good in my opinion, but. Um, so again, this is super difficult to do because you're mixing so many artifacts together and this is actually, there, there, there is actual obvious uh, digital grain manipulation happening here and it makes other parts of the image look too smooth, right? But this, this is, I, I, you know, I, I, and it's just these very, very micro things that are happening that I'm seeing on screen and it is going you know, it, it's going, you're watching it and it's going in on a subconscious level that I'm seeing like things like this and just the way the light is scattering and the encode or the restoration is not able to resolve this um, to make it look as clean and as clear as possible. So, um, yeah, I mean, look at this, it's sa same, same thing really. Um, but, but then, but stuff, even stuff like this, right? They don't, it doesn't look particularly over sharpened at all it actually um, it looks almost native right to it um, dark corners though no the camera's there but dark corners I, I tend to look at to see if there's anything strange going on and uh, yeah um, potential instance here of over applying too much sharpness like back in the reason this is important to know is because there's a lot of darkness in these corners, right, which would have had a lot of noise and grain. The darker, if you look at any of the, any movies, right, if you shoot outside in the light and then you shoot in the dark, when you shoot in the dark, you've got a lot more noise. So there's a lot more things to take care of. If you apply whatever tools they're, they're using to reduce this, um, you may have had to increase sharpness and detail back in, right? And not every shot is obvious. And a lot of the times ringing around hard objects and, and things like that is not obvious because it can be dependent on the amount of light coming into to the shot as well. But I, I can kind of see this as... There is potential there that they did use sharpness to bring this back in, right? They uh, they may also have um, uh, zonal sharpness. Uh, you know, again, I'm just calling it random things. Uh, 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 you know, like it, they can just sharpen a particular area, right? And and anything that was in focus, they maybe they could maybe sharpen, and they would have left this alone anyway because it didn't need it, right? So the, the area would have been here, right? That area would have been there because everything else is actually out of focus. And they could have just sharpened this area. And um, there is potential for visibility there that you could have uh, seen that. So, um, yeah, so again, the more light you lose in an image, the more difficult this becomes. 
Now again, um, this is not analog noise anymore, or is it, it, it's a mix of analog noise and them trying to control this noise in a particular way, but it is clumping. It is, it is now clumping into a digital uh, look rather than, again, an analog look. So anytime this type of restoration is used, you, you, you need to be aware of like what's actually happening, like what's happening with noise. It's combining it into a clump. So uh, the scattering effect again, anything really again underwater, lots of noise and grain control here because this shot almost looks very smooth. Right, and almost devoid of uh, film grain. So, too too soft. Um, to be fair, I think they've gone a step too far uh, with this shot. I can't say that there's ringing or anything around here. I can't really see that. So they didn't really look to apply. There's not much in focus here. Like, what part is truly in absolute focus here. I think it's almost out of, it's actually slightly out of focus compared to some of the other shots. So, um, because the, 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 again, there was gonna be a lot of film noise and grain in here and, and in this part as well. So can you apply, uh, again, this is too smooth. Can you apply uh, noise reduction in, in zonal areas, right? Like you potentially could with sharpness. Not, I'm not too sure. I'm not in. I'm not in that industry, and I'm just here to discuss what I see visually. Right? I may not know what any of the stuff is called, but I can see like that. There's things going on here. Same, same deal, really. So, yeah. Now, um, uh, C I'm going to call it CGI, but I'm, uh, to be honest, a better word would be just be special effects, right? Um, so the special effects shots um, are obviously going to be a mix of two shots together, and um, there could potentially even be banding. And uh, I'm not sure, like the bit depth, the, like they would have had to use to like doing this these types of, of effects back in the 80s more than likely it was 8-bit. I don't know if, if special effects ever went down into like the 6-bit or anything like that. I have, no, I have no idea. But my assumption is, is it is 8-bit because some of the screenshots also show that it's not perfect like it is today or anything like that. This is fine, right? Um, if it is a restriction and a, an issue with, say, the source and the time that it was shot, you know, I think everybody has to be understanding that you know, the tech that we have uh, now versus the 80s, I still think this has been done exceptionally well. So, but there is a lot of noise in this part of the shot compared to like some of the other parts. There's some definite things going on here. So, um, uh, yeah, not much to say here. Again, I took a bunch of shots and uh, they d I didn't really like go ahead and think about uh, anything that I wanted to talk about like directly. Um, I'm just kind of talking over the top of these. So um, yeah, quite a soft shot again. And uh, I'm not necessarily, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if it is soft because they've done a lot of uh, other things, I do dislike that. So yeah, again, anything underwater with light scattering like this, it actually becomes difficult. Uh, to resolve everything in the water and then you apply any digital things going on on, on top of it so um, So My assumption is again. This is just an assumption like say on on the, on the laser disc that may not even be able to You might not even be able to see film grain on laser disc, right? But this wouldn't look like this on, on that format. I don't think this, these are blocking artifacts now. Now this could be from the encode, right? The, uh, James Cameron might look at this and say, that's actually, uh, that's not how our final cut uh, restoration looked. So this is actually potentially even being now introduced from 40, whatever the average bit rate, 43 megabits per second, right? So we have that now on top to think about. 
where are the art where are some of these artifacts coming from so uh potential banding uh on on some of these shots as well this one isn't obvious but we do have a we still have uh noise in the shots right there's still noise in the shots it's just the um, they look now, it looks now softer, and again, they, they clump together in an unnatural way. So, yeah, um, yeah, now we get into the, uh, the tough scene, right, uh, drowning. And, uh, yeah, this, to be honest, this whole scene is so, to me, just so impactful. It's so powerful, right? It really is. Um, again, we've got the film glow here, and uh, we have got quite a bit of grain control going on. I don't, again, I don't like the underwater shots um, from that perspective. Um, so, yeah, um, I actually thought this was a really just incredible shot like that. Uh, excellent shot. And yeah, so so there is noise. Uh, I know some of the camera might be here, but there is there is still noise in some of these shots, right? It's not that they completely removed absolutely everything. It's just that they turned it into a fine grain noise into a more subdued, controlled uh, digital look. So, whew, whew, this scene. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, the passion in this fight, you know, it's just, God. I, I had to rewatch this uh, again uh, the next day because I was like, I, I need to just see this again. I just rewatched the entire movie because I'm like, I, I said to my brother, I'm like, this is just so powerful. This, this movie is incredibly powerful. And, um, it's interesting that I think that their, their relationship um, almost becomes a metaphor for the movie that countries can hate other countries and relationships uh, you can split apart and, you know, he's calling her a bitch and things like that. But at the end of the movie, you know, there is a, there is a love there and... Uh, you know, it's almost like finding uh, each other again, right? Through the experiences that they're going through here, um, it shows them that there was, uh, there is still love there, right? And yeah, this becomes just an incredibly passionate scene um, and emotional scene. Um, I think um, Ed Harris did absolutely incredible work here. Like, yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, her reaction says it all, right? I think this is the reaction of everybody else watching this scene. You know, we're just on... Uh, we're, we're about to lose it. We, we, you know, many of us uh, already have, right? And we're just shocked at this entire thing that is just happening. So, yeah. Um, some ringing going on here. Um, again, are we uh, zonally uh, increasing sharpness in here? We wouldn't have done it here, right? Um, it almost looks, it does look glowy, uh, almost like, um, almost like that modern filmmakers do this, um, when they shoot digitally, right? They put, um, like, uh, illumination. They put, they illuminate certain, certain areas. I don't think that's happened, but it just looks that way, right? It does look that way. So, um... Now again, a, a very low APL shot, average picture level, with very little light in, in the shot, so there's gonna be a lot more noise in the source shot, right? On the film itself, there's gonna be more noise in these in the and film grain in these shots. So maybe this is why this this does have this look, because they did have to apply some sharpness back. So now I did find this shot, and again, um, this this is showing that there is banding on this movie. So again, Dolby Vision ju doesn't just automatically mean that you will remove all banding 
if bending is in the source, then Dolby Vision can't clean this up, right? So um, it also shows that I think that some of this banding is actually caused by the restoration itself because there is a lot of grain control going on here. I can see it. This is no longer film noise. This is digital noise. And it created this look because again, grain clumps together and creates these uh, almost like eight bit, eight bit artifacts. But again, this is, this is um, the tech at the time as well. There could even there could be um, banding in the source because of the again the tech that they had at the time. So yeah, uh, this was a particularly poor shot, and there is a ton of noise in this shot. Um, I'm surprised they allowed this one to get out. Now I again I don't know if this is um, potentially encoding issues. Or it is, or it is just from the source, right? And they could only take care of so much. So the the shot looks in focus to me, right? There's no so that I, I, again, I don't know how much um, they applied here, because some of these shots they can switch from one shot to say another relatively quick, and it's like well, you couldn't really pick up on a lot of things. So I don't know, you know, does, is some is some of this missed? So, yeah, this was a this was a good one as well. I don't think uh, I think I put this out on Twitter um, after watching it, and only a few people got the reference. So, yeah, love you, wife. Incredibly powerful again, and uh, yeah, I really do think um, a metaphor for the movie is their relationship as well. So, just an interesting way of looking at it. Um. Yeah, now we are getting into some special effects shots and probably uh, green screens or blue screens, whatever they had at the time back then. I, I don't know what it was, but um, again, this is fine when you're at the limitations of your own technology. It's just uh, where I have issues with, say, modern movies is we have all of this technology and you're still making your CGI and blue screen, green screen uh, work look absolutely terrible, right? Um, but yeah, uh, it didn't look bad. You know, I thought, I thought it looked quite good. Like it didn't look obviously terrible. Um, this is an independence day shot, right? <laughs> independence day did exactly the same shots as this where like people are climbing over cars and then, um, the explosion, uh, the explosion would be coming from the middle here where they blow the white house up and they blow, uh, Empire State building up and everything like that. Everyone's running and it's just a still shot, right? I'm not sure if they could have done those shots with the camera moving. So yeah, same same thing, right? But I think it looks quite good, right? Again for the time, right? This looks nice. Um, so Okay, we forget this shot, right? You know, we got the uh, <laughs> We got the we got the uh, the modern green screen uh, uh, look going on here, so uh, you know we, we, we've got to we've got to sneak a few in, um, you know. But again, these these guys right here, James Cameron, these are these are tech limitations for the time, which I'm again I'm com really completely fine with. Hey, it doesn't look its best, right, or um, as good as it, it could now. But you know that's that's just half of the course with uh, filmmaking uh, I think and you the choice to use uh, these type of effects so uh, yeah another again another strong scene they're they're displaying back what they they wrote to each other really really good um, there are some really nice shots uh, down here and again I like the color just general color grading, I, I thought was a, a nice change uh, from being trapped in, you know, that that ship really for or whatever it is uh, for the for the entire time. So um, gorgeous shot, excellent shot. That looks good, very very good. 
Uh, there could be things going on, right? We're smoothing a little here, but you know, it's still, it's gorgeous photography. So, um, yeah. The end in here as well, fe it felt like cl a classic ending, right? A uh, traditional ending. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, everything came together at the end, right? And we, we succeeded. Uh, I don't know. It just uh, it, it is a good, it, it's a good feeling movie, and after watching it, you're left there like holding your heart, really, um, and you it it leans on you for a long time. This movie, so um, I think that's it. Um, uh, in memory here as well, uh, dedications, and um, yeah, directed by James Cameron. So. Um, an absolutely incredible movie, right? I absolutely loved the movie. And again, yeah, I watched it the uh, very next day. I said, uh, you know, I'm watching this again because I, I, I could not get enough. And I even want to watch this again now, right? I think it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, is this the best version we have on the home video formats, uh, you could say? I think this one has to be, right? The, the difference between this and a laser disc must be huge. Um, I haven't seen that, but it would have to be huge, even with uh, some of the imperfect uh, style of restoration that has actually happened, right? Um, so yeah, this is, in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, where does this uh, rank uh, with, uh, with the James Cameron movies? Um, out of the three, out of the three movies that have been released here on 4K, this is the best, right? Um, many shots are actually not obvious, right, what they're doing, which again is a, is a good place to be. Um, you know, if you're watching them on an OLED and you are picky like me, excuse me, then um, you probably are going to see um, a, quite a bit of softness and the way light scatters in water and things like that, you are going to pick up on, right? you're definitely going to pick up on that. Um, but, you know, do I recommend this disc? And I do, I do recommend the disc, um, even to like, say, like the hardcore video files. Um, you know, it's going to replace your laser disc, right? It, it's just going to. Um, you know, an old, no one can say to me that an old 480, Actually, it might even be 360i, the laser disc at this point. I don't know if actually, yeah, it might even be 360. Interlace format is, uh, is ever gonna compete with this, right? There's a lot of shots that look really good still, right? It's not bad. It's just got a layer of, I can tell. I can tell that something went on here compared to all of the other movies that I see shot even in this generation. Um, of um, the 80s and the 90s, right? I can tell the difference between this movie and all, most of the others. So, um, yeah. I mean, look, I said, um, I said in my Aliens uh, review, if James Can Cameron was willing to press, and he did a deal with uh, Disney, five to 10,000 copies a limited edition version of The Abyss, Aliens, and uh, True Lies without digital manipulation, and they are v obviously for very specific people like myself that don't love to watch movies um, that have had quite a bit of digital manipulation done to them. I would pay for it. And, you know, the, the price tag on it may be 200 to $250, right? To pay for the, that style of going back in there, having to re-encode everything, having to take care of this in a different way. Yes, it would have to be paid for because it is such a small uh, thing. Do I think he would do that? No, because it would potentially say that the original restoration then wasn't good, right? Um, so no, I don't think they would do that, but I would pay for it. I honestly would, right? And you know, you never know later down the, down the road when somebody else looks at this, right? And says, um, 
we want to do uh, this this movie and maybe others real justice and not remove so much from the source again I would pay for it so that's the type of uh, that's the type of um, film watcher I am right I would pay for that I would pay a premium for that so um yeah uh, just you know just some thoughts there um I, I don't want to go too too heavy uh, here into the audio or anything like that because you know this is already a, a long video but i just want to say i think the dolby atmos upgrade was excellent um it was a four and a half out of five for me um it's not a reference disc or anything like that and i don't think um any of the james cameron uh, movies are reference discs uh, in terms of uh, audio apart from maybe um, Avatar, Way of Water. Uh, reference disc, eh, maybe maybe not, but it is a, that's a five out of five. It's an excellent disc. It, it makes use of channels when they are needed. It has a very ultra solid bass uh, um, kick, you know. So in that respect, it, um, he's, he can produce excellent sound or, you know, work with sound engineers and sound designers to get excellent sound. But James Cameron's movies have a signature sound that I'm starting to hear with um, his Dolby Atmos upgrades. Um, his mixes have a very traditional sound to them. And what I mean by that is um, he doesn't abuse the fact in audio that he has all of this technology around him. He could put sounds above, behind and everywhere. But to me, that's the the art of sound design just because you can doesn't mean you should right and um, I wish that sentiment would be used more on video restoration um, because on video restoration I feel as though they go too far but on audio they remain respectful right they remain he remained here respectful to the original sound right and but going underwater and in the underwater scenes you, it sounds as though an ocean is above you and around you and i love that there was also a point where the um what's this i, I don't know what the uh, they're not in a ship but it's like a station um when it when it gets dragged along the, the ocean floor to the um well to the abyss i guess you could say right and it we, we would just fall there's actually there's actually significant bass there, right? So um, they've done a nice job. I, the thing is, when I when I hear that bass to to a movie like this, I'm like, okay, I can hear that, right? That's that's been changed. That's been upgraded, right? And it's good to hear. But I I know it. I know they've done it. I can tell because a lot of movies in this generation just simply did not have that level of bass. So, but it's, again, it's a nice upgrade, uh, really nice. I think it's good sound and I really appreciate that. That again, some, for some people, sound may be enough to make people upgrade, right? Uh, from a laser disc, I mean, that would be really, you know, or buy into, right? Um, this, is a, this is a good sounding movie and it's a decent looking movie. Um, but I still have to be like true um, to the way I review and things like that. What do I want to see out of transfers, right? I'm not the type of person that, you know, would review this, say, five out of five. But Aliens is also five out of five. So because I want a review system that has depth, right? If you review everything at 10 out of 10, five out of five, where can you go from there? Nobody can tell me and look me in the eye and, and keep a straight face and tell me that the, the difference between aliens and this disc is equal. They are not. Nobody could tell me that the difference between aliens, this disc, and um, uh, say a movie like Oppenheimer on 4K are in any way equal in quality, encoding, and everything. Nobody could, nobody could ever say that to me. So you need to, in my opinion, right, this is just my opinion, if you are a reviewer, you need to have a scoring system that allows your audience to see and be able to tell 
the differences between these movies. That's the whole point of, of putting out reviews, right? So I can let you know this is the best of the best the format can do, and this is, this is okay, and this is not so good, right? This is, uh, this is on, the, on the poor side. So, because I'm, I'm seeing rev some reviews and I'm like, what are they, like, are you watching the same movie as me? Right? I, I'm serious, I'm asking, like, are you actually watching the same disc as me? What are you watching it on? Right? Are you 25 feet back? Right? Are you 18 feet back? How far are you away? Can, because you are, your scoring system to me doesn't look as though you can tell the difference between one uh, transfer and the next. One restoration piece of work and the next. I just wanted to say that because, you know, um, you know, I just don't think having uh, this disc reviewed at, say, a 10 or a 5 out of 5 and Aliens being having the same score is, um, does anybody any good, right? That's, that's, that's not good. So, so we're right. Yeah, the sound. Four out of five, solid at Dolby Atmos upgrade. It has good bass. It doesn't abuse uh, the uh, spatial audio, right? It doesn't abuse it. But uh, we do have the technology. You can tell that they've used it. And it remained respectful. I think that was good. But the vid on the video side, while I think it is uh, the better one out of the three um, from James Cameron here, uh, to me, if I can see digital manipulation in any way, I have to review it at a certain level, right? Because to me, I don't like that. You may dislike film grain and then you review that, that poorly. That's your right. But my right is to also say that I can tell that some of these things were done and it actually lowers the picture quality and performance because of that. So to me, um, I'm leaning between 3.3.5 to 4. So I'm just thinking, you know, I'm going to split the difference. And that is 3.75, right? I would review the picture quality here at 3.75. Um, and I, th to be honest, I think that is a fair score, right? That is not a bad 3.75. It's just a... I can't justify reviewing this as a f at, at a four out of five because four out of five for my scores says i say at least that it got a it got a lot of things right right which this this did it did get a lot of things right but as soon as i start seeing things that are obviously not correct i just ha i have to bring that down and i i have to have a scoring system again that can say this is where it belongs in the grand scheme of things right this is not a recency bias score or anything like that this is a real score of you know we're all humans here we everybody gets excited from new movies and it you know i don't want to say that anything is bad but i'm part i'm i want to be past that can't just to be about this is a brand new release we're so excited it's been however many years it's been yeah this is this is that this is the best it could ever look so it must get maximum scores that's not the case you know there's things done to the restoration which i don't like end of story right and my scoring system i think reflects that so um 3.75 out of 5 not bad not bad right it is not bad it's just some parts i could see what was happening so that's really all i want to say um about these discs and um you know i guess you could say about other reviews right you know you've got to have balance here and have a system that can accommodate the difference between the best and the worst not everything is a you know a 10 out of 10 killer disc it's not so and i'm not saying that again this is actually a bad disc i've seen uh, far worse <laughs> you know um this was generally generally said it was 
pretty respectably, uh, respectably handled. Right? It's just, um, you know, how I, a lot of the shots for me still look too soft and a little bit too controlled for my taste, right? Um, I do consider myself a pretty strict reviewer. Uh, you know, yeah, very, very strict reviewer of what picture quality actually is, right? So, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, I hope you liked the review. <laughs> um, you know, um, let me know what you think after watching it. Uh, how would you review it? You know, what do you think? Um, what do you think about this? Like, is it the best disc you've ever seen? Um, do, you, do you have recency bias? Like, are you going to think this in six months or a year? You know, I'm, I'm try, I try and get away from being so excited about a disc that it destroys uh, my real thoughts about what actual picture quality is of, of a disc and things like that. So, yeah. But sound, yeah, great. Well done. That's really good stuff. Um, and the movie, absolutely gorgeous. They don't make movies like this anymore, right? Uh, you know, when is when was the last time I, I saw a movie this good? Amazing. Again, James Cameron showing that he is an absolute genius when it comes to filmmaking. Genius. Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I rewatched this and thought, okay, you can put um, True Lies and Aliens really to the side for a while. I need to keep rewatching this movie because it is so good, right? Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, excellent. Anyway, um, I appreciate you watching. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, too harsh? Um, just right? Or, you know, what do you think? So, um, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Bye.